Before we start the video today, I just want to remind everybody, whether you're a supporter of the channel or a viewer of the channel, to zip on over to my Patreon page. You don't have to be a patron to take a look at this, but if you scroll down when you go to the page, there is a video down here called 10,000 Subscribers Patrons Only. That is an awesome video. You need to watch it. I'm doing something really special for all of you that support me and for those of you who could become supporters in the future. So if you get a chance, when you get done watching this video, zip on over there. Like I said, scroll down to where it says 10,000 subscribers, and that's the video you want to watch. And while I have you all, I want to tell you thank you so much for re helping me reach 10,000 subscribers. Never thought I would be here. You guys have done so much for this channel, and I look forward to continually providing content that you like and welcoming new viewers to my channel. Once again, thank you guys so much for helping me reach 10,000 subscribers. You really don't know what it means to me. So now let's get to the video. Sometimes I get very interesting comments on my channel. As many Linux distributions as I look at, you can understand that a lot of those comments are positive. Mostly in the community, I get feedback that is generally positive and forward thinking. What I mean by forward thinking is this distro may not be the best, but it's on the right track. Well, a couple of months ago, well, it's quite a ways back now, I did a video on the issues I was having with Manjaro and the development team. It was a very in-depth video. I explained what was going on and why I was leaving. Well, last week, I also did a video that said, Manjaro, am I going back? And basically in the video, was I wrong? Did Manjaro fix their issues? I covered the fact that Manjaro reached out, they apologized for the issues I was having, and that they were going to try and improve their standing in the Linux community, which means they were also going to help out users as well. And in the video, I also stated, I hope this is true, I hope this comes to pass, and I hope they do do that. Well, on this video, Manjaro, am I going back? I received a comment. And that comment basically said, your bias against Manjaro is crystal clear in this video, resulting in my removing my sub to your channel. I'll check back again in a few weeks to see if you can provide information I can use without beating a dead horse. I wasn't beating a dead horse. I went over my problems in the past in a previous video, and then I came back to inform my community of Manjaro reaching out and basically what they said they were going to do. I don't know how that's beating a dead horse. But what this comment did make me realize and understand is that even though I do have subscribers to my channel, not everybody watches every single one of my videos. So maybe he didn't make that connection. Maybe he hadn't watched the previous video. That is why I'm making this video. Because I want to revisit a video I did about five months ago. One that touches base on Linux choice, Linux fragmentation, Linux chaos, or whatever you might want to call it. Because I have lost count on how many comments I've received talking about there is way too much choice in Linux. As a matter of fact, my most recent comment, the comment stated, my channel in and of itself is an example of why there is too much choice in Linux because I have so many different distributions that I have covered. This video that I did in January, I was still actually using Manjaro, but it barely got a thousand views. But there's a lot of good information in it, I believe. Plus, I want to use that video and revisiting that video to get input from you, my community, my subscribers, the people that watch my channel consistently, and know when they watch one of my videos, it links to a previous video. So, the question today is, is Linux choice bad? That's what we're going to cover today on eBuzz Central. Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to go over a comment that I received on my previous video, Five Linux Myths and Why You Shouldn't Believe Them. The commenter actually said, if everybody would just get together and come up with one version of Linux that they could make work for everybody, then there wouldn't be a problem. I highly disagree with this. That's basically saying you don't have a choice, here's what you need to use if you want to use Linux and that's it. So my question today, does having so much choice in Linux cause chaos and fragmentation. And you always hear the saying, is this finally the year of the Linux desktop? Well, if you ask this guy, to summarize the question that we set out to answer, is this the year of the Linux desktop? 
For gamers, the answer is no. If you ever ask him, it'll always be, no, this isn't the year for the Linux desktop. But quite honestly, I don't know about you all out there, but it's been the year of the Linux desktop for me since 2008. Because that's when I switched. That's when I moved to Linux Mint and left Windows behind. As you can see, I'm presently on a Manjaro desktop. I will be doing a video shortly about my switch over to GNOME for a month. It was kind of tedious, but I'm going to go ahead and cover that in that video. But what I want to do real quick is let's zip on over here and take a look at something. I'm not a big proponent of DistroWatch, but I'm not using them for the specific reason you might think. I'm just going over here to go look at the top 100 Linux distros. Now, yes, there are 100 listed here. Everything from MX Linux, Pop OS, all the way down to Robo Linux and Makulu Linux. That's 100 of them. And that's just a few of the ones that are out there, quite honestly. There's three or 400 that I know of right off the bat, and there's probably more than that. But does this cause chaos and fragmentation in the Linux community? Well, if you look at the definition of fragmented, you go over and it says broken or separated into distinct parts, or in computing, have a related or associate pieces of stored data disorganized. I don't think we're looking at fragmentation or chaos quite actually. What we are looking at is a matter of choice. Now, I've pulled up a few here. you got your Debian's, you've got your Ubuntu's, you've got your Linux Mint, Fedora, Arch Linux, Manjaro, MX Linux. And if you look at most of these distributions, Debian is pretty much viewed as the most stable. And then Arch is out there for the people that are really into command line and really wanting to really get into the operating system. But isn't that what makes Linux great? Do we really want just one version of Linux for everybody, so that way it can be truly accepted worldwide? I don't think so. I went from Linux Mint to Fedora to Manjaro, and I've been on Manjaro for over four and a half years. It does everything I need it to do. It never breaks on me, but then I'm going to have somebody in the comments go, every time you get an update on here, it breaks it. No, it doesn't. That's my question to y'all today. Does this freedom of choice cause chaos? I think what we really need to look at to begin with is what are our alternatives? We've got Microsoft, you can get Windows, or you got Apple and you could get Mac OS. All of these right here, making sure that they advertise right on their front screen that they want to sell you high dollar Surface Pros or they want to sell you their newest iPhone and you need to spend $1,000 to $1,500. And you've got to have the newest piece of tech. That is what they push. That is what they're pushing on everybody. Now, the beauty of Linux is no matter how old your system, you can have a system up to 20 years old and they make an operating system that'll work on it. That's what's beautiful is because you've bought this hardware and it's three or four years old, maybe 15 years old, you can still use it and still do work with it as opposed to every 18 to 24 months, depending on Microsoft or Apple, to sell you a high dollar piece of equipment. Next. Choice is what our community is about, whether you be in the Debian community, whether you be in the Arch community, whether you be in the Manjaro community. Choice is what we're here for. We don't care if the world wants to take Linux and make it theirs. We want to tell everybody the advantages of it. We want to tell everybody the meaning behind free and open source software, and we want them to enjoy what we have enjoyed for a long time, or if you're new to the community, what you've just now found out is that the free and open source software and the Linux community is definitely the way you need to go, especially if you're somebody that's worried about security, you're worried about Microsoft or Apple tracking you. I don't think people understand the links that these companies go to get your information. And then I have a lot of people go, well, they can have my information if I can have free stuff. Really? You're going to give up your privacy and your security just so you can have free stuff? I am i don't have to do that. I have free everything. I have freedom as in freedom. I have freedom as in my software is free. And I have an operating system that is free open source. I can use it how I want. I can change it the way I want. And I don't have to worry about being tracked to the ends of the earth to have these things in my life for the freedom that I want. Now, it really comes down to the end of the day. What are you using your operating system for? And does it work for you? If you're somebody that wants to worry about security and privacy, give Linux a shot. If you're somebody that's gaming constantly, 
Linux probably isn't for you, or if you're somebody that's locked into the Adobe products and what the Adobe software does for you, Linux is probably not for you. But other than that, you're pretty much free to do whatever you want with your hardware and own the things that are on your hardware, not having to pay subscription fees. Just like Manjaro, out of the box, I can open it up. I have an office suite. I open up my office suite. I don't have to pay a subscription fee for it. I don't have to give anybody any money. I have a suite right here that I can use that is compatible with Microsoft Office, and I can do whatever work I need to do and get it done. I don't have to pay a dime. I don't have to go online and use an online service. It's just here. So is that chaos to you? I don't think so. Let me go ahead and close out of this. I've got everything I need down here. VirtualBox. I've got Caden Live. I've got GIMP. I've got an image manipulation program that I can use to make my thumbnails or play around with some of my family photos if I would like. What do I pay for it? I don't have to pay for it. I do donate to the project because I do like what they're doing. So I do support them monetarily, but I don't have to go out and specifically get told you've got to pay $49.95 for this application or you've got to pay $25 a month for this application. I think people look at things and they want everything just wrapped up in a tiny little nice box so that they don't have to worry about anything. Like with Windows, I just download Windows and I'm good to go. It doesn't matter that they track every website I go to. It doesn't matter that when I go shopping online, they structure ads to put those on there. It doesn't matter that they keep track of my keystrokes or how I use my operating system because it's always phoning home back to Microsoft to tell them exactly how so-and-so is using their operating system and just how you need to advertise to them or what you need to put in front of their face. Same thing with Apple. They can preach all the privacy and security that they want, but they track you just so they can advertise to you. It is what it is, guys. So is freedom of choice chaos? No. Freedom of choice is just that, freedom. We can use it the way we want. We can own it. We can change it if we want. We can do whatever we want with it because it is ours. We don't have that luxury if you're using Microsoft or you're using Apple. Because even though you buy that high dollar hardware, they still control it. They control the updates on it. They control what's being sent to it and advertised to it. They control who repairs it. Let's not even get into the right to repair part of this argument, okay? They're creating hardware that you cannot repair. They're creating hardware that if it breaks, you take it back to them and they tell you, yes, we can fix it. It'll cost this much money. Or no, we can't fix it. You're going to have to buy a new one. But at the same time, I've got four different PCs in my house that are mine, not including my kids. My kids are probably two or three year old PCs. Those have Linux on them. I have two laptops that are over 10 years old that have Linux on them. I have a laptop that I use for a media center in my living room. It has Linux on it. And then this right here is my Asus ZenBook that I just put Manjaro back on. I do have a Windows machine, but I do that for comparative videos. So is so much choice in Linux causing chaos? I really want to get your feedback on this. What do you think as a community? If you enjoyed today's video, you can become a member right here on YouTube. Become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Buy us a coffee or throw us a donation on PayPal. I would also like to thank today's video sponsors. Producer Miss Lock Kralesa, Mitchell Valentino, VIP sponsors Matthew Gower, Antoine Wilk. All excess sponsors are Eugene Lee, Leonard McQueen, Mike DePolis, and sponsors and members Nitrix, Cato Gosted, Chad Jones, and Keith Hefner. If you like today's video, here's a couple more for you to take a look at. I generally cover Linux and open source. Sometimes I might do a little Windows bashing. Once again, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.